Okay, I'm going to quickly run through our space race quiz here. Uh, the first satellite. Oh, you're looking at it right there. It's something you could have held in your hands if it weren't so heavy. Um, that would be Sputnik, of course, October 4th, I believe, 1957. One of the key dates in human history. Sputnik, of course, launched by the Soviet Union, started a huge scare here um, in the United States. And just a year later, uh, President Eisenhower, in response, started something called NASA. So definitely caught our attention uh, when the Soviets launched Sputnik. And then let's see the first person in space. Well, there you go. The Soviets once again. So if you study astronomy uh, in Russia today, I'm sure they look at things quite a bit differently. Like, hey, the big thing was getting into space first and getting a person into space first, whereas walking on the moon is just a, a minor thing that came later. And of course, here in America, we we think of going you know, to the moon as being the big thing. But anyway, um, that was in April of 61, the first person in space, Yuri Gagarin, later died in a plane crash, I believe. Uh, the first American in space, which was right after that, uh, just weeks later, Alan Shepard, American Alan Shepard, the um, uh, company Blue Origins named one of their rockets uh, recently New Shepard in his honor. And then their next rocket was named after this person. Um, and I think that's Alan Shepard there right here is Shepard. And uh, more famous than him is this uh, gentleman right here who uh, just recently sadly passed away at the age of 95, I think. Uh, the first American to orbit the Earth, uh, that would be John Glenn. John Glenn. Uh, great movie to check out sometime um, about the early uh, the early space race was, um, oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank here in my own video. But anyway, I'll think of it here in a second, uh, where they play the theme song and the astronauts are walking out, the, uh, the original Mercury, uh, Mercury 7 astronauts. And uh, even in the movie, they portray John Glenn as, as being really the leader. And um, But anyway, um, he also holds the distinction of being the oldest person to ever go into space because uh, and had the longest gap between space flights. Uh, he holds that record as well because he went up uh, into orbit in 62 and did not go up again until 36 years later uh, with the space shuttle where he was a senator from Ohio at that point. And, um, oh, The Right Stuff. That's the movie I'm trying to think of, The Right Stuff. Uh, but anyway, uh, he went up in 1998 as the oldest person to ever go into space. All right. Uh, the first woman in space. What do you think? American or Soviet? Well, you might be surprised. The Soviets again, Valentina Tereshkova. And the first American woman in space, this is really uh, kind of embarrassing, wasn't until the 1980s uh, with uh, Sally Ride. So I was 10 years old and everybody, you know, all the grade school kids, we all knew Sally Ride uh, going up on the space shuttle at that time. Um, this one really gets to me a lot. The, the teacher, um, they did this uh, contest across the country to have a teacher go up. Uh, and um, the lady that won that contest, okay, can you imagine how elated she was uh, to be able to get this great honor? Uh, just part just part of the whole tragedy of the Challenger explosion in January of 86, uh, Krista McAuliffe. And I just think about the fact that her you know, elementary school kids were watching this in real time as this terrible tragedy took place. And uh, they never should have launched. It launched in the, in the coldest weather they'd ever tried the launching. And there were some engineers that were saying, hey, don't do this. And the, the O-rings in the, uh, the boosters, they, uh, in the cold weather, they shrank and allowed um, fuel to go where it wasn't supposed to go. And, and as a result, you have this just uh, terrible tragedy. I remember it's one of the most shocking things in my life Probably the single most shopping, shocking news event in my life. I was 15 at the time and stayed that way until 9-11. Um, so it was a big deal for people you know, my age. Um, first spacewalk, American or Soviet? Guess what? Soviets again. Alexei Leonov, 1965. We were just a few weeks off again 
uh, American Ed White, I think, took the first uh, spacewalk for us. Now, here is our here are the Mercury Seven that I mentioned before in the movie The Right Stuff, and um, they were our first seven astronauts. And we definitely uh, went on a publicity thing to hype them up and make them into uh, into heroes. And if you look at this spaceship that they went up in, that that Mercury capsule, my goodness, it just uh, uh, I think David Bowie got it right when he talked about here I am floating in a tin can. I mean that's uh, that's all it was, just a little one seat thing. And uh, they really couldn't even fly it. It was just so kind of primitive. Um, here, of course, is, I don't know if this is going to work or not. We'll see here. Um, the president uh, calling for us to go to the moon. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving a goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. No single space project in this period be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long range exploration of space. And of course, uh, with his death just two years later, I mean, it, it just, it added this emotion to NASA that, hey, we, we have to get this done. We have to get it done. And uh, you notice he, he actually said something interesting there. He said, before the end or before this decade is out, and the reason he said that is because technically a decade ends in 1970. And he purposely said that to give NASA was just uh, the first, I think the first draft of the speech, Kennedy said 67 and, and NASA just freaked out like, hey, we can't get it done by 67. Then he said, OK, by 69. And then they said, well, and he said, OK, I'll just say by the end of the decade and give you some room to work. The next program, which also often uh, gets overlooked, is the Gemini program, Gemini course the twins uh, because there were two astronauts that went up at a time and this was such an important series of rocket launches where we learned how uh, to do spacewalks and we weren't very good at it at first and uh, we learned how to dock spacecraft in orbit things that we were going to have to do uh, especially the docking there in order to get to the moon so Gemini kind of gets overlooked a bit um, because we want to go straight to the the Apollo missions, and of course Apollo used the most powerful rocket ever made to this day, I believe, the Saturn V rocket. There were two that never got used that are still sitting at uh, Johnson Space Center in Houston and the Kennedy Space Center here in Florida uh, that you can see the most powerful. They're just, it's amazing. It's just absolutely amazing how powerful uh, this rocket was. Now, I think that people forget uh, that the Apollo program started uh, with tragedy and this was really nasa's first major tragedy and i, I don't think people know about it but um, those three men right there died on the launch pad they never got to launch um, and it was a terrible fire in the capsule and uh, they couldn't save them in time um, at the bottom left is a picture that i took that's at kennedy space center showing the names of anybody who's been killed at nasa including the challenger astronauts i don't want to leave out the columbia the seven astronauts of columbia and uh and these three men and others so that was apollo one um but um that was uh it was just incredible how quickly nasa had to rebound because it didn't change anything for the space race we still had to beat the soviets and i just want to point out right now to clarify we did not go to the moon uh to do science or anything like that we went to the moon uh to beat the russians period end of story it was all really a political thing, and that's when NASA's budget, of course, reached its peak um, of about 4% of the GDP, I think, at its peak, uh, because it was a political thing. It was about beating them. Anyway, so we did not take time to slow down or really grieve or anything like that. I mean, they just they just kept going, and, and just like a year and a half later, we finally had this, this incredible mission of Apollo 8, um, the first time that human beings orbited the far side of the moon that we learned about earlier in the chapter. So these were the first three people to get to see with their own eyes. And uh, something really interesting happened. While they were filming the, the stark backside of the moon, all of a sudden something came up at the window. And I don't think anybody expected um, what was gonna come from this because all three men stopped what they were doing and they looked at this beautiful blue marble coming up over the moonscape. And they turned their cameras, and it turns out that maybe the most important part of this mission was not the moon, uh, but it was seeing the Earth for the first time from this perspective. So this this picture, I've heard it called the most important 
picture ever taken. Um, it is certainly hugely influential Earthrise, showing us there as, as what we are, as this little lifeboat adrift in this vast nothingness and in and, and this, and this void and with nowhere to go you look at the moon it's not a very nice place to visit uh, not a place we can escape to so a lot of people um, think that it's not just a coincidence that just two years later uh, we have the first earth day um, and we start thinking about the earth differently and taking care of it because uh, again there's no place to go all right and then we get to the big moment july 20th 1969 Almost two years to the day before I was born, Apollo 11. There they are, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Neil at the bottom left. Um, we'll just show you here. That's Neil. That's Buzz. And uh, the th poor third guy, I like to call him the designated driver. That's uh, Michael Collins. And he had to just orbit the moon waiting to pick them up. And every Apollo mission, that's what you had. You had that third person uh, by themselves uh, doing that. So anyway, uh, let's see if this is going to work here. The final approach, and you hear some famous... I'm going to skip some of this. All right, there it is, the famous one. It's one small step for a man, is what he's really supposed to say, meaning it's a small step off the ladder, but it's a giant leap uh, for mankind. Uh, here you see the only six places we ever landed on the moon. And uh, I th people are usually shocked by this. The United States is the only country at this point to ever land people on the moon. That, and we only did it six times, and in a very short time period from 1969 to 1972. That's it. And nobody's been back. I think um, it'll be interesting to see if we go back next or if the Chinese uh, beat us back there. But we and we never landed on the far side. Everything was there on the near side, as you can see. Uh, we went back in Apollo 12 and then Apollo 13 famously wasn't able to land. If you haven't seen this movie, do yourself a favor. It's just a, a terrific movie, an incredible movie. Um, we watch it every year on our way up to Kennedy Space Center. And just a few shots here, famous shots uh, from those early missions. Actually, this shot here might be the most famous one of all at the upper right. That's a picture of Buzz Aldrin. That's Buzz. That's not Neil. It was taken by Neil. And you see their, their, their eagle lander. So you had this famous saying, uh, uh, the eagle, Houston Tranquility Base here. The eagle has landed. The eagle has landed. Here's just a fun clip. I like that one because there's a whole backstory to that about he's the first scientist to go to the moon. The first uh, he's a geologist and uh, he has some issues there and they were probably kind of making fun of him. Anyway, uh, here's the lunar buggy I talked about earlier. And there's uh, the president at the time, President Nixon, uh, greeting them. They're actually quarantined for a while in case they had, you know, moon germs or something. And here's how they leave the moon. And see how it pops off and that base is still sitting on the moon today I just feel really bad that they had to leave the cameraman behind okay just kidding that was done um, with a remote camera that was done with a remote camera to get that view of them lifting off so that's kind of he was actually controlling it by joystick from Houston and then the last mission Apollo 17 the last person on the moon is a guy named Gene Cernan who's still alive here in 2017, and they left a plaque, we came in peace for all mankind. And if you ever have anybody that says we didn't go to the moon, I mean, we can look in telescopes and still see the equipment that we left. Thanks for listening.